There are a bunch of new items available on the Creation Club. They cropped up a few days ago, but I've been so busy with other content that I'm just now getting to them. But sit back, buckle up, and together we'll go through all of them. Though it might take a couple of videos. In today's video, we'll talk about the Zetan Arsenal. In farmlands untouched by progress, aliens known as Zetans descend on our planet, carrying with them powerful weapons made of unknown technology. For what purpose? No one knows. But watch the skies, and you may soon find out. Includes three out-of-this-world weapons. Created by Adam the Rizzler Ridsdale. Quest created by Chris Takahashi. The Zetan Arsenal is going for 600 credits. But is it worth it? Let's find out. When we next arrive in the Commonwealth, we begin the quest over the moon. Investigate the roads west of Grey Garden. Fast traveling to Fiddler Green Estates, if we take the road north, we stumble upon a bridge. And lying on the bridge is a dead farmer and a dead Brahmin. On his body, we find the farmer's note. I've always had trouble sleeping. Just the slightest noise and my eyes pop open wider than a cornfield. Of course, out here that ain't a bad thing. Whether it's the raiders trying to steal your lunch or the mutants trying to cook you for it, if you want to survive in the commonwealth, you gotta have your mind on a hair trigger. But that night, what woke me wasn't a noise, it was a light. My first thought was poachers coming after Bessie and the herd. So I grabbed my shotgun and ran out to where they were grazing, but somewhere between the farm and the field, I noticed the light wasn't coming from the ground. It was coming from the sky. Now I've been known to spin a tall tale or two, but what I saw next is the God to honest truth. It was my Bessie, hooves and all, 40 feet in the air. The next morning, I tried to tell a traitor what happened. They tried to convince me she was carried off by blood bugs, but I've seen them things make a meal out of a Brahmin before. This was different. It was like she got sucked up right into the sky. It's happened two more times since. All I got left now is Emma. She's Bessie's only daughter, and I'll be damned if I let them have her, too. So I'm taking her back to the wild, back home to live with her kind. It may not be the safest place to be, but if she's off the farm, at least she'll be safe from them. In fact, Emma's been there once before. When I rope a wild Brahmin, I like to have one of my own beside me. It lets them all know I treat my herd well. Of course, Emma took up a spot near the back, where the hub flowers grow. At first I thought she was being shy, but later I found out she just likes the smell. Next time I come visit her, I imagine that's where she'll be. But sadly, Emma never got to smell her lovely hub flower garden again. We find her lying dead next to her owner. But on her body, we find Emma's keepsake. She may be dead, but at least we can deliver her keepsake back to the land with the wild and roaming Brahmin next to the Hubflower Garden she so loved. Inspecting the keepsake in our inventory, it looks like a bit of a bell. Cowbell, maybe, with some interesting markings on it. Is that an eye? Very interesting. By divining the hidden message engraved upon the bell, we learn that this pasture of wild Brahmin is off to the northwest, next to the Nuka World Transit Center. It's a bit of a run, but as we approach... Oh no! Put it back! The ship managed to escape with one of the Brahmin, but we killed the two soldiers they beamed to the surface. On the corpse of one, we find the alien atomizer. And it's a carbon copy of the one we remember from the Mothership Zeta DLC for Fallout 3. Though I think this one is painted red. If I recall, the one from Mothership Zeta was all silver. But the shape of the thing is exactly the same, and it's gorgeous. We also get 146 alien blaster rounds, which should keep us in business for some time. On the body of the next alien, we find a full stock alien disintegrator. Another weapon we should be familiar with from the Mothership Zeta DLC. I used both of these on my Fallout 3 character until viewers said that I was using overpowered weapons, but what can you do? 
Here we also find over 150 alien blaster rounds, but we still have a job to do. Heading to the west, we find a trail of dead Brahmin, and on one of the bodies we find an alien shock baton impaled in one of the Brahmin heads. And again, a very familiar weapon from the Mothership Zeta DLC. Finally, to honor Emma's memory, we can walk south to her favorite hub flower patch and place Emma's keepsake on Emma's spot. With that, we build a little memorial mound, complete with a stick from which her bell is hanging. And with that, we complete the quest over the moon. Now to see exactly what we've got. The alien atomizer is an energy pistol, and when we get it, it does 78 damage and has a fire rate of 100. The alien shock baton deals 25 damage plus 19 energy damage, and it has a medium swing speed. Ooh, did you hear that? It's got a little sci-fi ring when you swing it. And finally, the disintegrator when we get it comes with the full stock. It does 144 energy damage with a fire rate of 40. And much like the alien disintegrator we recall from Mothership Zeta, the projectile is pretty slow. Something to keep in mind, but we'll cover that in a minute. Now to take these weapons back to our workshop to see what mods are available. Starting with the alien atomizer, it has two magazine options, one which came with it. The standard magazine uses the alien blaster rounds, but we can upgrade it to having a fusion magazine. This allows it to use fusion cells, which are much more numerous in the world. For sights, it only has two options, standard sights and a reflex sight, and it has two grip options, a standard grip and a comfort grip, which simply increases its accuracy by two. But this thing has a bunch of different barrels. In addition to the standard barrel, we've got the splitter barrel. The damage for the splitter barrel jumps from 78 to 84, and it has an increased fire rate, jumping from 100 to 120. The splitter barrel suffers a range penalty going from 155 to 119, but it gains plus one to accuracy. The model is really unique and gorgeous. We didn't find variants like this in Fallout 3, so these are completely new to this creation. Here's what the splitter barrel looks like when fired. We have the comfort grip, the fusion magazine, and the reflex sights on this. So the splitter barrel turns it into a pistol shotgun, firing multiple projectiles. The next option is the slicer barrel, dealing even more damage than the splitter barrel, 97 compared to 84. However, we lose the plus 20 to fire rate, though we gain a ton of range, 155 compared to 119, and we get one point of accuracy to boot. It also does extra limb damage. This is what it looks like when fired. Looks like it fires a long projectile designed to shear limbs right off. Pretty cool. The final option is the suppressor barrel. And like the previous ones, it has a completely new look and it looks great. The suppressor barrel is silenced. And so to compensate, the damage goes down to 78, the same as the standard barrel. It also has a 100 fire rate and the same range as the slicer barrel, 155, and its accuracy goes down by one. So really the only benefit we get with this compared to the others is that it's silenced. Good for a stealthy assassin pistol guy. And this is what it looks like fired. Not exactly quiet, but maybe enemies will have a hard time hearing it. Next, we've got the Disintegrator. There are two stock options, full stock and marksman stock. The marksman stock increases accuracy by plus two from 71 to 73. It also provides better recoil, aim with scopes, and bash. So we'll go with that. For magazine options, we again find an option to switch from alien blaster rounds to fusion cells, depending on the kind of ammo we want to consume. Then we've got three sights. The standard sight that comes with it, a reflex sight, increasing accuracy from 73 to 80, and a short scope, increasing it even further from 80 to 88. Then there are a bunch of barrel choices. It comes with the long barrel. Directly above this is the short barrel, which is the standard short barrel. Switch 
switching to this decreases damage from 144 to 132 and reduces range from 203 to 155. For that, we only gain one point in accuracy. This is what it looks and sounds like with the Marksman stock, the Fusion magazine, and a short scope. Next, it has a splitter barrel. This bumps the damage way up to 149, but it significantly decreases accuracy, dropping it to 41. Fire rate and range remain the same. Here's what it looks like with the reflex sight. so it's a bit of a higher-powered shotgun compared to the atomizer. Then there's the sniper barrel, which improves the damage significantly again, jumping from 149 to 173. And we get a huge boost to our range, jumping to 227 compared to 155, and we get our accuracy back up to 82. The downside is that we lose out on fire rate, dropping from 40 to 33. It also loses out on ammo capacity and hipfire accuracy, but we can still fire 35 rounds before reloading. This is what it looks like. Notice how slowly that projectile moves. I found when using it in actual combat that quite often the enemies would simply step out of harm's way. Next, there's the atomizing mist barrel. This drops the damage quite a lot. We're down to 28 ballistic and 21 energy damage, but the fire rate jumps up significantly to 109. However, our range is decimated all the way down to 35. We also lose out on accuracy, but it makes sense because it's basically a flamer. Pretty cool. Gives the Plasma Flamer a run for its money. Next, there's the Spinning Barrel. Damage goes up to 56, but it's back to energy damage only again. Range jumps back up to 155, but our accuracy drops to 73. It's not meant for firing from the hip, though. This is what it looks like. So it's, just, it's a bit strange. This is the only automatic version that I found, and yet it has poor hipfire accuracy. You'd think that if any version of this weapon needed good hipfire accuracy, it would be the automatic version. Still, if your character can handle it, a pretty deadly weapon. And finally, there's the lobber barrel. Damage goes way up, dealing 181 ballistic and 263 energy damage. Wow. Fire rate goes way down to 20, but our range and accuracy both go up to 203 and 80 respectively. It's got bad recoil, poor ammo capacity, and hip fire accuracy, but as you'll see, it reminds us a lot of the drone cannon. But unlike the drone cannon from Fallout 3, we can shoot these suckers much more frequently. It's like a plasma grenade gun. Finally, we've got the baton. We can modify the head and the hilt. There are two hilt options, the standard hilt and the comfort hilt. The comfort hilt reduces action point cost, so it's a VATS only improvement. But we find a number of different head options. The bladed head improves damage, both ballistic and energy, from 27 to 32 ballistic, and from 19 to 21 energy. It also causes enemies to bleed. This is what it looks and sounds like. Ooh, do you see that? Try that again. <laughs> I love that telescoping feature of the baton. Nice touch. Then there's the heavy head. This does even more damage, but it only improves ballistic from 32 to 40. And instead of a bleed effect, it does extra limb damage. This is what it looks like. Ugh. 
Again, love that telescoping effect. And the final option is the Stun Head. This does far less damage than the Heavy Head, doing the same ballistic damage as the Standard Head 27, but it does have improved energy damage compared to the Standard Head 33 compared to 19. But the best thing about the Stun Head is it has a chance to stun, which can cripple enemies for a period of time. When testing it, I found it worked really well. This is what it looks like, again with the wonderful telescoping effect, and it has a different sound when swinging it. Sort of an alien swoosh. And there you go, that's everything we get with the Zetan Arsenal. So, is it worth it? After all, it's about six bucks. Well, as I think I say with every one of these videos I make, overall, I think the Creation Club items are overpriced. I don't think the Zayton Arsenal is worth six bucks. So that aside, what about the quality of what we get? I think the quality is amazing. The models are really well done. I love that each different upgrade has a completely different visual, especially with that alien atomizer. That is a handsome looking gun. I wish the automatic version of the Devastator had better hip fire accuracy. I'm a bit bummed about that. I could see myself using it as an everyday weapon on my Institute character if it just fired better from the hip. The slow project the projectile speed of the Devastator makes it so that I'm probably not going to use it as my everyday sniper weapon. But it would make a handy shotgun, though the Atomizer also has a shotgun version and it fires much more quickly. There are pros and cons to the quest. I love what we got. The scripted event when the ship enters the atmosphere and begins to abduct the cow is hilarious and really well done. And the way it accelerated after abducting the Brahmin was amazing and intimidating and scary and otherworldly. I thought that was great. But the story about the farmer and his Brahmin Emma who had her favorite little spot by the flowers and then creating the shrine out of her bell in her memory. Ah, I don't know, it seemed a little silly to me. I also wonder who killed the farmer and Emma. It wasn't really explained. Was it an alien? Why would they hunt him down? Overall, I think the drawback to this particular quest is that it was just too short. It was really simple. We find the body, we follow the note to the Brahmin, we see the abduction, and we kill the aliens. And that's it. For six bucks, I was expecting something a little bit more in depth. Something along the lines of the Captain Cosmos creation. That creation was only a buck more expensive than this one, and we got an entirely new dungeon to explore, a bunch of new notes and terminals, brand new weapons, and power armor. I just felt we got more bang for our buck with that creation. Everything we get with this creation is wonderful. The quality of the weapons in particular, I just felt that it was a bit too short for the six dollar price tag. But that's just me. And I'd love to know what you have to think. If you're not familiar with the Zetan weapons, I encourage you to watch my series on Mothership Zeta from Fallout 3. In that series, I covered the entire story to that DLC, and it ended up being one of my favorites. And the weapons to Mothership Zeta really made that DLC so much fun, so it was great being able to use them again, this time in Fallout 4. There are a few more updates to the Creation Club, but we're out of time today. But I'll be sure to cover them all in upcoming episodes. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I publish many videos each and every week here on my channel, so if you want to make sure you don't miss my next episode, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. I have a brand new shirt in the shop, graduate of Oxhorn's Driving School. That's right, you can celebrate my talent behind the wheel in L.A. Noir with this brand new shirt. The design comes on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. You can get it on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with more brand new videos.